Hello and welcome to Raju Notes channel, your pit stop for weekly current affairs updates. The updates tailor made for students taking all kinds of competitive exams like UPSC, civils, defense and placement interviews. Please subscribe to the channel and stay updated every Sunday. Indian Space Research Organization Aditya L1 the ISRO's first space-based Indian observatory to study the sun was launched today successfully at 11.50 hours from Sri Harikota Space Station in Andhra Pradesh. The satellite will be placed in a halo orbit around the Lagrange point L1 of the sun and earth system which is about 1.5 million kilometers from the earth. It will take around four months to reach the Lagrange point. Once at the point, the Aditya L1 will slowly keep revolving around the L1 point due to tugging effect of Sun and Earth gravitational pull. The advantage of halo orbit around the L1 point is that the satellite can observe the solar activities without any obstruction by other celestial activities like eclipse. This PSLV C57 Aditya L1 mission can be counted as one of the longest missions involving ISRO's workhorse launch vehicle. However, the longest of the PSLV mission is still the 2016 PSLV C-35 mission which was completed 2 hours, 15 minutes and 33 seconds after liftoff. Now, Aditya L1 will stay in the earthbound orbits for 16 days, during which it will undergo 5 maneuvers to gain the necessary velocity for its journey. Aditya L1 will stay approximately 1.5 kilometers away from the Earth directed towards the sun. This is about 1% of the distance between the earth and the sun. So congratulations to entire country and proud to be an Indian. Germany is being called the sick man of Europe by some economists as the country's economy stagnated in the second quarter after entering recession in the previous quarter. The country is also battling an industrial slowdown and high inflation. Meanwhile, some economists rejected Germany's sick man label, which is used to describe countries in Europe experiencing economic difficulties. The Indian team of Mohammed Anas Yahya, Amoj Jacob, Mohammed Ajmal V, and Rajesh Ramesh have become the fastest from Asia to run the men's 4 into 400 meters relay. The quartet achieved the feat after clocking 2 minutes 59.05 seconds in Heat 1 at the World Athletics Championship 2023. They finished second in the heats and qualified to the finals at the championship. With this, Indian team becomes the Asia's fastest to run the 4 into 400 meters relay and enters World Cup Championship. The government's cyber security awareness handle Cyber Dost on X has issued a warning about smishing scam. Smishing is a combination of SMS and phishing, wherein fraudsters use misleading text messages to trick people into sharing confidential information. In our advisory, the government has warned against clicking on suspicious links and sharing personal information over unsolicited texts. Commenting on the Gaganyan mission, Minister of State for Independent Charge for Science and Technology Jitendra Singh said, Now we are planning the first trial mission in October 1st or 2nd week. In the second mission, there will be a female robot, Vyoma Mitra. Vyoma Mitra is a half humanoid prototype that can monitor through modules parameters, send alerts, and perform life support operations. It can do operations like switch panel operations, talk to astronauts, recognize them and respond to their queries and well mimic all human activities. If everything goes perfect, then we can have a go ahead, Singh further said. Wagner Group Chief Yevgeny Frigozin, who led a mutiny against Russian President Vladimir Putin, has been confirmed as one of the 10 people who died in the plane crash that took place in Russia on August 23rd. Genetic tests were done to confirm the identities. Russian officials said, notably, the Wagner Group had threatened retaliations after news of 
Prigozhin's death surfaced. The central government is the only body that can conduct a census or any action akin to it. The government told Supreme Court with regard to the caste survey conducted by Bihar government. It cited the Census Act of 1948 in its affidavit filed in the apex court. The Bihar government earlier told Supreme Court it conducted caste-based survey till August 6. Olympic gold medal winning javelin thrower Neeraj Chopra has become the first ever Indian to win a gold medal in World Athletics Championships history. The 25-year-old won the men's javelin throw final at the World's Athletic Championship 2023 with the best throw of 88.17 meters. He is the first Indian to win multiple World Athletic Championship medals. He also won a silver in 2022 edition. Geetika Srivastava, a 2005 batch IFS officer, has become the first woman since independence to be appointed India's Charge the Affairs at its High Commission in Pakistan. Srivastava is currently a Joint Secretary in Ministry of External Affairs, Indo-Pacific Division and was previously Director of the Ministry's Indian Ocean Region Division. She served in Indian Embassy in China during 2007 to 2009. Union Minister Nitin Gadkari on Tuesday launched the world's first BS6 Stage 2 electrified flex fuel vehicle running on 100% ethanol. Flexible fuel vehicles have an internal combustion engine and are capable of operating on more than one type of fuel. E85 is the official name for flex fuel, which has 85% ethanol and 15% gasoline or other hydrocarbon by volume. The elements found by Chandrayaan 3's Pragyan rover on Moon's South Pole include sulphur, aluminium, calcium, iron, chromium, titanium, manganese, silicon and oxygen. The presence of elements was confirmed by rover's laser-induced breakdown spectroscope LIBS instrument. ISRO said that the search for hydrogen is underway. An international team of the physicists led by nuclear physicist Yoshuke Kondo of the Tokyo Institute of Technology has discovered Oxygen-28, a new type of isotope of oxygen. The Oxygen-28 is an isotope of oxygen with 20 neutrons and 8 protons. Oxygen-28, the heaviest version of oxygen ever created, is significantly less stable than expected. Union IT Minister Ashwini Vaishnav on Wednesday said 32 global electronic companies have applied to the government's incentive program to make laptops, PCs and other hardware in India. Some of the big manufacturing include HP, Dell, Acer, Lenovo, Thomson, VVDN, Foxconn and Netware, he added. This comes weeks after the government announced restriction on laptop imports. A special session of parliament has been convened from 18th to 22nd of this month. The session will have five sittings. Parliamentary Affairs Minister Prahala Joshi informed this through a social media post. He said Amit Amritkal, the government is looking forward for having fruitful discussions and debates in parliament. Earlier, the monsoon session of the parliament which began on 20th of July had concluded on the 11th of August. Parliament approved 23 bills in the session, including the Digital Personal Data Protection Bill and the Government of National Capital Territory of Delhi Amendment Bill. Inception, a unit of Abu Dhabi AI company G42, has released JAIS, the world's most advanced Arabic language large model. JAIS is a bilingual Arab English model that has been trained on a massive data set of text and code. It can be used for variety of tasks such as machine translations, 
text summarization and questioning and answering it. It was trained on a Condor Galaxy, the world's largest AI supercomputer, using 116 billion Arabic tokens and 279 billion English tokens. It is also open source, which means that anyone can use it or contribute to its development. JS is available to download on the Hugging Face machine learning platform. India's first indigenously developed 700 megawatt nuclear power plant in Khakarpar has started operation at full capacity. Gujarat Minister Harsh Sangvi said and shared a photo. Prime Minister Narendra Modi wrote, India achieves another milestone. First largest indigenous 700 megawatt Khakarpar nuclear power plant unit 3 in Gujarat started its full operation and it to its full capacity. Congratulations to our scientists and engineers. The invoice incentive scheme Mera Bill Mera Adhikar begins today. The objective of the scheme is to bring a cultural and behavioral change in the general public to ask for a bill as their right and entitlement. The scheme will give an attractive reward of 1 crore rupees to the consumers. All residents of India will be eligible to participate in this scheme irrespective of their state and union territory. Maximum 25 invoices can be uploaded by an individual in a month to be considered for the lucky draw. This scheme has been initially launched as a pilot in the states of Assam, Gujarat and Haryana and union territories of Pondicherry, Dadar Nagar Haveli and Daman and Diu for a period of 12 months. Government of four nations have rejected China's new map after India and accused it of making unfounded territorial claims. The nations, which include Philippines, Malaysia, Vietnam and Taiwan, have issued strongly worded statements condemning the new map, which includes contested regions. India condemned China as it claimed Arunachal Pradesh and Aksai Chin as its own territory in the map. Indian origin Thurman Shanmugaratnam has won Singapore's presidential race. The 66-year-old former Deputy Prime Minister won the 70.4 percentage of vote. He will assume charge at Singapore's third Indian origin president. Singapore is a parliamentary democracy and the Prime Minister Lee Hessen Lung is the head of the government. The National Council of Educational Research and Training NCERT, has been granted deemed university status. Union Education Minister Dharmendra Pradhan announced this on Friday this week. The minister made the announcement during his address to the 63rd Foundation Day of the NCERT. Institutions that are deemed to be university benefit from the academic status and privileges of a university. And now for the segment where we see the events that unfolded this week back in history. 27th August 1576, the death of Titian. Titian, the greatest Italian Renaissance painter of the Venetian school, who was once described as the sun amidst small stars. Not only amongst the Italians, but all the painters in the world died this day in 1576. 28 August 1963, Civil Rights March on Washington. On this day in 1963, some 20 lakh people marched on Washington, D.C., an event that became a high point of the civil rights movement, especially remembered for the famous I Have a Dream speech of Martin Luther King, Jr. Twenty-ninth August 2005, New Orleans, hit by Hurricane Katrina. On this day in 2005, Hurricane Katrina struck the US Gulf Coast and devastated the area, especially New Orleans, which experienced catastrophic flooding after its leaves were breached the following day. 30 August 1983 
historic space flight by Guion S. Bluford Jr. U.S. astronaut Guion S. Bluford Jr. became on this day in 1983 the first African American to travel in space, serving as a mission specialist aboard the Shuttle Orbiter Challenger and later flew on other three missions. Thirty first August eighteen sixty four, Confederates evacuated from Atlanta. During the American Civil War, the Confederate evacuation of Atlanta began this day in eighteen sixty four. Shortly before Union troops led by William Shumish Sherman occupied the city, providing a much needed victory for the North. First September nineteen thirty nine, German invasion of Poland. The lethal combination of German blitzkrieg tactics, French and British inactivity, and Soviet perified doomed Poland to swift defeat after Adolf Hitler invaded the country this day in nineteen thirty nine and sparked World War Two. Second September sixteen sixty six. Great Fire of London. On this day in 1666, the Great Fire of London began accidentally in a house of the King's Baker. It burned for four days and destroyed a large part of the city, including Old Saint Paul's Cathedral and about 13,000 houses. Well, that's all, friends, for this week's updates. See you soon next Sunday on the same channel. Till then, take care. Bye bye.